Hello friends, today we will talk about who was Jesus. As the title says, it might appear that the way how I present who was Jesus might seem like I know Jesus personally and I have spent time to, together with him and so on. No, it's, it's an analysis about Jesus from a different perspective. That's it. The traditional way how the priests talk about Jesus in churches is different. This you all know. But today we will look about Jesus and we will talk about him from a different perspective. So who was Jesus? The first question which comes to our mind is, is Jesus a, a God or a man? So is he a God or a man? Simple. The foundations of Christianity is based on the fact that Jesus is a God. If we say that Jesus is not a God, that's it, end of Christianity. So anyway, let's look into that. How do we assess if Jesus was a God or a man? Only through the text. Bible, which is available with, let's say, almost everyone now, details the life and teachings of Jesus. And this is the baseline which we have to take. So, there were many activities attributed to Jesus through which he is claimed to be a God. Fine. Let's take a sample of them. I mean, very few of them. Let's say virgin birth, the birth of Jesus Christ through Virgin Mary. One, he cured many people. That's another one. He took away our sins. Another one. And he raised himself from death, resurrection. So take these three or four cases, write it in a paper, give it to your kids who go to who goes to school and ask them to check with their science teacher about the scientific knowledge or evidence of these activities. So you are not doing anything, you are asking your children to check with their science teacher. You know the answer. There is no proof. There cannot be any evidence. There is no scientific baseline for these claims. then we would suddenly tend to argue, yeah, but this is based on belief and faith. And yes, they are all true. Belief is needed. Faith is required. But from this perspective, from today's subject, if we ask the science teacher, you won't get an answer. What does that mean? Is Jesus a God or a man? We have to look at this even from a different perspective to understand it better. It might appear that just because of the based on the scientific evidence, I would say Jesus was a man. Yeah, I mean, this is the conclusion which we have to come up. But I'm not giving up that easily. We'll have to see what other religions talk about God 
and how they address God. The primary difference between Islam and Christianity is only two things. One is Jesus was not the son of God. They accept Jesus but not as a son of God. Second thing is, he did not die on the cross. That's it. The fundamental elements of Christianity are not accepted. These two points are not accepted by Islam. This is the only difference between Christianity and Islam. Nothing else. The God is the same. Yeah, in in Islam, they call God in Arabic. That's it. But the God is the same. Okay, this is one other perspective. Let's go back in history and see Buddhism. What did Buddha say? He found the truth, enlightenment. Did he talk about any God? No, but he talked, I mean he was talking or he spoke about a state, the truth. That's it. Let's go even back. Hindu scriptures. What do they say? When I say again Hinduism, we'll have to be careful the worship forms which we see nowadays in temples do not represent real Hinduism. Yeah, they are forms of worship made by saints of the past so that people can focus their mind. That's it. Just, just imagine if I look at a picture of my native place, the place where I was born, to see how it was looking 100 years back. It was horrible. And we are talking about 2000 years back where people had no idea about God and so on. Whereas these saints have attained a certain level of perfection and in order to help people, they started to build temples so that people can come and focus their mind. So that's how the temples were built. But that does not mean that is Hinduism. Yeah? Real Hinduism is something different, which is very, very de in detail explained in the Upanishads, if you want to understand it easily. So th this is what the different religions talk about. So what does real Hinduism talk? What does it say? It says man has the possibility to attain to a certain level of perfection and the highest possibility is that of God. That's it. So, compared to Jesus, how does that fit? Does it fit at all? Yes and no. So, in general, in simple terms, if we look at Jesus as a God, through the way how Christianity projects Jesus, he is not a God. He cannot be considered as a God. Why? There is no scientific backing. That's it. It does not fit. Does that mean that he is not a God? I disagree. Now I say Jesus is God. Jesus is God. How and why? I'll explain. Not based on the reasons which 
Christianity propagates. No, that is not the reason. One reason why Jesus was projected as a God is his teachings. What did he say? He was preaching about only one thing. I mean, he spoke many things. Yeah, He spoke about many things. You'll have to remember the four canonical Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, would have been written at least 50 years after Jesus' death. After the death of Jesus. 50 years. And then when they write, yeah, Jesus was walking and he's turned back and he smiled and so on. Yeah, okay, there could be some errors here and there. But that is not the point. His teachings, what was his teaching? He was teaching about only one thing, the kingdom of God. And where is the kingdom of God? Within you, full stop. So now, this is his teaching. Okay, within you. Let's go from that perspective, just from that statement. The kingdom of God is within you. Does that fit with other religions? What does Buddhism say? Yes, this is what Buddha taught. What does Hinduism say? This is what the Upanishads talk about. Okay, there is a match. Okay, there is a match between what Jesus said or what Jesus preached, what Buddha preached and what the Hindu scriptures say. So from this perspective, let's go one step further. What else did Jesus say? Is there anything peculiar which we can pick up and then go ahead? Yes, he said something about God. I and the Father are one. That's it. This is the single statement which would qualify Jesus as a genuine person and as a God. Why? The Hindu scriptures go further and say the one who knows Brahman becomes Brahman. So if you, if you know God, you yourself will become a part of God. This is called yoga and so on. That is the real yoga, not the exercise, exercises which people are doing, the breathing exercise. Uh, no, it's all, they are not yoga, they are exercises for the benefit, for the for a healthy body. That, that is not yoga. Regardless of what name you give, it is not yoga. So, I and Father are one. This single statement would qualify Jesus as someone who has seen, who has come across in close contact, let's say, with God. Jesus talks, uh, talks about Father, and in the Hindu scriptures, it is called Parabrahman. So without attributes and so on. So how, how does that fit together again? On one hand, we have a person called Jesus. A man who has attained a certain level of consciousness. Let's say there are no levels in consciousness, but still this is the phrase which we give nowadays. So is that possible in Hinduism? Yes, that is a only possibility in the Hindu scriptures. So even if we stick on to our current principles of claiming that virgin birth, he uh, carried away our sins and he resurrected and so on and so on. After a period of time, this is bound 
to fail. This concept itself is bound to fail. Why? It cannot be backed up scientifically. Whereas Jesus will be accept, accepted as a God by or through the Hindu scriptures because it is a genuine case. That You don't need to look into many things. This is a single bit of information which one needs to say yes, he was a genuine person. We can go on talking about this. You know, was Jesus a God? Did he carry away our sins? Maybe, maybe he could have cured or let's say taken away the sins of his disciples. How about, how about yours? There should not be any pain. There should not be any suffering. There should not be any cry. But you still suffer. People still suffer. What is the difference? Let's say you also say that Jesus is a God. And I am now saying that Jesus is a God. Then you can say, yeah, then what difference does it make? At the end of the day, he is a God and I am worshipping him. Then where is the difference coming from? The difference coming from your personal development. Think about your forefathers, your grandfather, your father. They have believed in something, in Jesus, fine, it is not wrong at all. As I said, he is a God. Believing is essential. Faith is essential. And they were waiting for Jesus to appear in the clouds. But Jesus did not come since 2000 years. He did not come. Whereas there has been many, many saints. There have been many saints within Europe who have seen and lived with Jesus after his death. What does that mean? There is a group of people waiting for Jesus to appear in the clouds because we think that he is a God. Whereas other saints have lived with Jesus thousands of years after his death. This is something to think about. The difference is just by waiting for Jesus means nothing. Nothing. There is a long way to go. What we currently do is we just say, yes, I accept Jesus as my savior. He took away my sins and I am free and I'll do whatever I want. No, this is deceiving yourself. Just like how a drunkard gets drunk and he wants to be in that state without agitated. How people enjoy pleasure just by going to a movie, for example. If it is a very good movie, you just go, you forget about everything. You be in that, let's say, pleasure state for a while and then you come back. And then that's gone. So this is what we are doing. Just trying to convince ourselves by saying that, yeah, everything is fine. Everything is fine. This is what our forefathers did. Grandfather did. Father did. Some of them died. Many of them died. And is this the way how we are also going to be? If you are thinking about Jesus, after your death, everyone will die. I mean, no one is going to live here permanently. Everyone one day has to die. But I'm talking about the life now. So what difference would it make between these two cases is enormous. In one case, 
you believe in Jesus and do nothing in the name of faith and the second one is you believe in Jesus but you still have a lot of things to do really a lot having a clear mind a pure mind love everyone and so on so on so on it goes on the ones proceeding in this direction will one day come to realize that the nature of the atman or the self is the same as brahman or in other words i and father are the same which jesus managed to achieve jesus is very much alive he is watching you he is willing to help you but the work is not on him but on you and me this is the difference if he has taken away our sins as i said earlier we shouldn't be suffering suffering is not in his plan if we suffer it is because of us the only way is to find the kingdom of god how do you find the kingdom of god to go inside yourself as said in the old testament be still and know that i am god first is be still and then the second one is to know god not to talk about god knowing is different from talking about god what we do is talk about god which is useless practically what talking about god means what i can talk about many things throughout the day we do talk many things many subjects that does not bring us closer to god knowing god personally is different may god bless you